Apriti here from How to Electronics. A couple of weeks ago, we received a parcel from G Plus IoT. The parcel contained a few LoRa modules called as LR1276. This module uses an SX1276 LoRa chip and works on 915 MHz frequency. The SX1276 incorporates the LoRa Spread Spectrum modem, which is capable of achieving a significantly longer range than existing systems based on FSK modulation. As this board operates between 1.8V to 3.7V, so I decided not to use this board with Arduino. The Arduino boards have 5V SPI pins, but SX1276 doesn't tolerate 5V. So the best alternative to Arduino is STM32 board. The STM32 is a lower power controller with 3.3V tolerate pins. In this project, we will interface SX1276 or LR1276 module with STM32 microcontroller. And this tutorial consists of two examples. In the first example, we will send a simple hello world message from LoRa sender or transmitter to receiver. But in the second example, we will send the sensor data wirelessly. The DHT11 humidity temperature sensor is best suited for testing application. The STM32 LoRa sender will send the sensor data to STM32 LoRa receiver. Now let's just learn about G plus IoT, the LoRa module LR1276. These are the pair of LoRa modules from G plus IoT. We will be using this for point-to-point -point communication. The LR1276 module is designed based on SX1276. The SX1276 incorporates the LoRa Spread Spectrum modem, which is capable of achieving a significantly longer range than existing systems. At maximum data rates of LoRa, the sensitivity is 8 decibel, which is better than FSK. But using a 20 ppm crystal LoRa can improve sensitivity by more than 20 decibel. And this module has the best communication reliability. For maximum flexibility, you can focus on spread spectrum modulation bandwidth, spreading factor, and error correction rate. Let's check its dataset now. The maximum link budget is 168 decibel with an RF output of plus 20 dBm at 100 milliwatt. Using a power amplifier, the efficiency is plus 14 dBm. The programmable bitrate is 300 kbps and sensitivity is up to minus 148 dBm. The receiver current is only around 9.9 mA and this supports all the modulation techniques like FSK, GFSK, MSK, LoRa TM, etc. The dynamic RSSI is 127 dB with a packet engine up to 256 bytes with CRC. It also has a built-in temperature sensor along with low battery indication. The application areas of this LoRa module is automated meter reading, building, home automation, alarms, and security system, and also in industry and agriculture. You can go through this dataset to learn more about this module. This is the block diagram, and this is the specification table. Here you can see the operating voltage between 1.8V to 3.7V. The current consumption in idle, standby, receive and transmit mode is very very low. You can use a helical antenna by directly soldering on the module. You can also use an external UFL antenna with better power by directly connecting to this terminal. These are the details of the pin as it has total of 18 pins. The pins are SPI pins, UART pins and some GPIO pins. As clearly mentioned here about the PCV details and dimensions, I decided to design the PCV using the same details. I used Easy EDA to design the PCV. Here is a PCV file. In 2D and 3D view, the PCV looks something like this. You can download the Gover files from the link in the description and order your own PCV. Here is the PCV or total number of 5 for the product. The PCV looks exactly the same as shown in the 3D view of the software. The build quality and finish are just superb. Here you will need to solder male headers on both sides to use this PCV with the breadboard. After soldering the LoRa module on the PCV, it looks something like this. I used 915 MHz antenna here and connected to the UFL connector. You can use a breadboard and interface this module with any microcontroller with 3.3 volt logic. So let's just start the interfacing process. I used an STM32F103C series microcontroller from SD Microelectronics. 
This board is known as Blue Pill and has support for using Arduino programming. And the GPI pins are having a 3.3 volt logic. Therefore, LoRa module is friendly to this controller. Here is the connection mapping between SX1276 and the STM32F103C development board. Connect the SPI pin of the LoRa module as instructed here. I used a breadboard for the assembly. I assembled the pair of circuits here. One of the circuits will act as a transmitter and the other will act as a receiver. Use the antenna of a given frequency on both modules. Otherwise, you won't be able to achieve maximum distance and signal power will be very low. Here is the code for both sides. One is the transmitter code and other is the receiver code. And this code uses the STM32 LoRa library. Then we defined SS, RST and DI0 pin. We also defined transmitting power, LoRa frequency band and then encryption code. The encryption code on both codes should be same. Else the receiver won't receive the message. In the setup section, we initialized the serial function and set the other LoRa parameters. In the loop function, we send the hello message with a counter number. The LoRa will transmit the message after an interval of every 5 seconds. Similarly, in the receiver part, everything is same except the loop part. In this part, when the message is received, the LoRa packet will be parsed and will display the parsed message with RSSI. Now go to tools and select STM-F103C series board. Select the variant as mine is 64K flash. Select the upload method that you are using. Here I am using the upload method as STM32 Duino bootloader as I have already installed the bootloader. And leave everything else the same. Select the COM port and hit the upload button to upload the code. And using the same method, upload the code on the receiver side as well. After uploading the code, open the serial monitor on both transmitter and receiver sketch. In the transmitter sketch, you will observe the message has been sent and the receiver has received the same message along with the signal strength. Now let's see the second example. In this example, we will send sensor data wirelessly. The sensor we have used here is DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor and we will read the sensor data in the transmitter end and send it to the receiver end. To display the sensor reading at the receiver, we have used a 0.96 inch I2C OLED display. The OLED will display the received message from the transmitter. Both the connections are easy and require few wires. In the transmitter, we connected the DHT11 sensor to the same previous circuit. And in the receiver part, we connected the OLED display to the I2C pins. The connection for both circuit board is pretty simple. You can refer to the website article for the connection. While moving to the coding part, we have added the DHT sensor library on the transmitter and then use the library to read the humidity and temperature value. Then we combine all the strings together and send the message in the array. While on the receiver part, we added the library for only display like SSD1306 and GFX library. In the loop part, we define the position of the received message to separate the received variables. The received variables are then displayed on only display. So, upload both the code again on the transmitter part as well as on the receiver part. So, here is the test. The transmitter side is reading the humidity and temperature sensor data and send the data wirelessly to the receiver. On the receiver side, the DHT11 temperature and humidity data is displayed wirelessly on an OLED screen. You can keep both circuits apart and check the distance as well. You can find more information about the LoRa module and a detailed guide in the website article of Howto Electronics. If there is anything that you'd like to ask, comment down in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.